Hello everybody, Mark45 from Mark45 Studios here. There, I changed up the intro for once. <laughs> we, are we are finally, finally taking a look at a LEGO Summer 2020 set that I have been anticipating since the 1st of June 2020. And this is from the LEGO City Wave, the LEGO City Line, the Passenger Plane. That's right, LEGO has finally made a new version of a LEGO airplane and this is my very first LEGO airplane. Never had the previous sets unfortunately, but when I first saw the set, really wanted it. But of course, as I've mentioned for many other sets, the set release was delayed, came out everywhere in June except for US and Canada. And uh, yeah, it's finally out. We had to wait two months for this, so I hope the two month wait for this was worth it. Of course, if you're an international viewer, you now understand why it took me this long to post this video. <laughs> okay, so let me let me first start by saying airplane, very big, much bigger than the ocean exploration ship. Just just to tell you right now, uh, comes with a good handful of minifigures and then a side build. So let's start off by taking a look at the box of this set. Oh, and in case you're wondering, Mark 45, I think we're missing a minifigure in this lineup. Well, look in the tower. The control tower, he's sitting right there. There you go. So I do have a perfect setup. Okie dokie, this is the box for the set. It is a $140 set, so therefore the box is actually, you know, on the on the big side. But it's it it's not too big as you mentioned, because the actual contents inside, like I said, the pieces are actually pretty big, so we'll get to see that. Um, so this does feature the celebrity Poppy Star, which we'll take a look at when we go over the minifigures. This is set 60262 with 669 pieces. Up there it just shows the measurements of the plane, which is 54 centimeters long. And let me tell you, make no mistake, this plane is really big. We'll get to that, of course, in a bit. And then just going up here, just another artwork of the, you know, the all the... I guess the pilot is like the leading all the passengers off the plane and and yeah and the workers are greeting them that, that that's pretty funny and then on the back of this box we've got just a shot of the plane flying over what I'm gonna assume is the ocean and then just showing you all the other stuff you can do within this actual plane there's a lot of things going on here and it's showing you all the other side builds and everything else uh, but yeah very, it's done, it's done pretty well. And of course, you know, it's Lego City, what do you expect? All right, so that is it for the box. Let us take a look at the set itself. All right, first thing we gotta address, look at the size of this plane. I am genuinely just very, very impressed just with the overall size of this thing. And of course, this isn't new. Lego has made a bunch of old, air, well, they've made previous Lego airplane sets. But for this one, definitely, this thing is very big. Lots of things happening. It's just, it's very epic. Now, the other big set that came out this year alongside this plane is, of course, the Ocean Exploration Ship. Now, I just want to see, in terms of the size, how big they are. So, this thing, quite heavy. I mean, not it's not even heavy, but it's quite huge. Let's move that to the side right here. It's not going to be completely in frame. And let's take the ocean exploration ship. Go check out that review, by the way, if you haven't. Let's put that right here. So, without a question, it may look like the ship is bigger. Yes, in length, the ship is longer by a little bit of the plane. But the overall width and the size, uh, just bigger than the ship in general. It's, yeah, of course. But it, it, it contains, it's quite a hev heavy amount of really big pieces. The wings themselves, I'll show in a bit, those are pieces of their own. And just, yeah, these are two massive behemoths. Definitely something you will want to watch out for. So, that's the ship. And uh, yeah, so just want to show you that quick size comparison. Let's actually take a look at the plane itself now. All right, the overall, the overall exterior appearance of this thing, it, I love the color scheme, you've got Blue. We've got Keytorn yellow at the back. We've got a little bit of orange and white uh, overall. I believe this plane definitely looks very attractive. It just looks absolutely amazing. Uh, of course, I really, 
I believe the old, there were some older models that were better, but I think well, my personal favorite of this color scheme definitely has to be this one for sure. And uh, I believe the nose piece here, this piece, I believe it's new. I think with the older planes, it was a different mold, and this is definitely, I think, at least I think so. I believe it's new. But this plane is compiled with a bunch of big new pieces, and we just we just have to, yeah, we're gonna take a look at them. So, like I said, we starting off earlier, starting off here with the nose. I already said this. I believe this is a new piece, but generally a pretty not not a bad piece at all. Now there are stickers here, which is not perfectly aligned with the orange here. So I'm sorry if you have OCD, but this will surely bother you a lot. It doesn't bother me too much unless you have to look really closely. So. Look at this from a far point of view. Yeah, actually, it's not that quite noticeable. There's also another sticker here with a orange blue transition thing there. That's fine. Again, not perfect, but it's hardly noticeable. Shouldn't be too big of a problem. And yeah, and then we go on to here now. We've also got the windows for the actual, you know, for the passengers within the plane. And then we've got the first half of the wing. With the green light at the end, very epic. The wing piece itself is a massive mold piece. It's not two, it's one whole piece attached together just like that. Then we've got the engine propeller number one right here. And yes, this thing is rotatable. So if I was to lift this up and turn this around, then you can see you kind of mimic this spinning just like that. Very, very simple and very straightforward. Um, might as well show you the bottom now that I've lifted this plane up. You can see, oh, you, gotta, you actually can't really see, but right here we go. You can see there's wheels, which you can't really tuck away, which kind of sucks. I wish there was a uh, play feature where you can fold the wheels away when the plane's actually in the air, because obviously the wheels will be tucked away if it's in the air, and uh, you won't have it dangling as it's flying. Obviously on the ground, yes, but like when it's in the air, no. But yeah, that kind of sucks. I wish there is a big gaping hole down here. So I really wish there was a way we could just tuck away those wheels. And there's also one front wheel just like that, which can obviously rotate depending on the direction you're turning your plane when it's on the runway or just landed, you know, that, yeah. So it's got kind of like the variant. Again, I wish there was a way here where you can just, a play feature here where you can just tuck away the wheel when it's in flight mode, so. Kind of sucks, but oh well. All right, moving on to the back. We got the tail and everything else. And this is where, again, also where the color scheme kind of adjusts. Sticker number one right there. Now that sticker doesn't look too convincing to me. That that just, that actually looks pretty off. I am not going to lie. And then down here, and then we got another sticker. Again, I said these stickers won't be perfect. So you can't expect the perfectness every time. And right here, you got another sticker here. But look at this color scheme back here. I believe the color scheme transition here is is done pretty well, in my opinion. And then we got the main tail. You got the tiny wings here. But then we've got this tail. Now, you may think, oh yeah, surely this has to be a sticker. No, it's actually a print. And that completely got me off guard. It caught me by surprise. Definitely, because when I first saw the pictures of this set, and I saw that, like, yeah, definitely that is going to be a sticker. But LEGO really spared us some insanity from all the other stickers throughout the plane. It made this tailpiece a print. They need more of this in the future, I'm saying LEGO, like, why don't you make more of this? Because that is actually a lifesaver, and I, yeah, I was 100% expecting this to be a sticker, but it's not. So the pair is actually printed onto the, the tail piece here, and that's absolutely good. We need more of this LEGO. This is exactly what the fans want. We don't want to, you know, have such an anxiety moment trying to apply the stickers on this thing as perfect as possible. So there's that. And then just one little light at the top, in case you're wondering. Now, to turn this plane around, let's take a look at the other side of the plane. Just simply move it this way. Now, any any like major differences? Actually, there's a little bit of difference because on this side is actually where the majority of the play features are. So, kind of important that we don't skip out on this side and show you everything else. So first and foremost, let's just get the wing out of the way. You can see 
on this side, this is not pushing properly. Yeah, there we go. On this side, in case, um, instead of the light here being green, it is red. So, Christmas colors, I guess. The other half of the wing, like I said, this whole wing is one big piece. So, it's just connected through the center, just like that. And then, of course, the same engine thing can be rotated right here, just like that. Very simple. And then, yeah, windows, more here, more stickers, and then the main airlock door to the plane, the main entrance. Normally, I believe the plane will have like at least two, so I'm quite surprised this one only has one. So, I mean, given the fact that there's not a lot of room inside the actual plane, but how it does it open, you just simply just tuck it out like this, and it's attached like that. Now, that's not, in my opinion, not particularly the best way of connecting the door just because of how loose it is I can just easily snap it but I guess it works you know it, it, it delivers the the idea of the plain doors pretty well and of course if you want to get the minifigures into the play and of course you're gonna need one of those lifts and that is where the side builds come in now this is where I would normally show the side builds short uh, separately but because they all have a role for the plane itself I will be showing them one by one on the go. So, now that we're at the door entrance, we're gonna show you side build number one. And that is this thing. Stairs, the steps. Well, obviously, the minifigures can't jump that high into there, and then IRL, it's the same concept. So, it makes sense that we have this thing. These are steps, and just the build of it is very, very simple, but it serves its purpose of its attention it just provides the steps up to the plane it does on wheels and it has a clip here because i'll show you later on with the cargo truck this clips on the cargo truck for it to tow along as well now of course if you're still confused about the purpose of this you simply park it right up here and that will create the steps for your minifigures to go from the ground take the stairs and enter the plane through there so very nice the colors the fact that it's blue matches the bottom of the plane pretty well so the color doesn't clash it actually just it fits in perfectly and that is very nice and now you can have a minifigure walk right in and then when the plane is ready for takeoff this thing just backs up the door closes and then the plane is ready for takeoff so very nice steps uh just to like help with the with the for, with the doorway so it's done pretty well, but that is not all. There is another play feature. So we move on to this side of the plane. I already showed you the tail, like I said, print piece, very surprised, yeah, you know that. But there's something right there. What does that you say? Well, first and foremost, we gotta unlock it. And how do we unlock it, you may say? Right now this thing is locked, so if I tug at it, it won't budge. And the lock is actually down here. There's a blue, very tiny blue Technic pin that it blends in with the color scheme there perfectly. You can actually barely see it, so the color scheme is executed very nicely and it blends in perfectly. Now to unlock it, you just simply push it down like that. And that releases this door. And what does this door do, you may ask? Well, first and foremost, I just realized this piece is not pushed all the way in. There we go. Okay. Handle right here, and you just lift that right up. Whoa! Now that is space for you to store, uh, depending on what you want. You can store luggage, you can store cargo. If this wasn't a passenger plane, it was a cargo plane. I assume this would be the space for you to put all the put all those parcels in. But in this set, they provide something for you to put inside this. Um, what do you call this? compartment that is this little red car now let's take a look at this little red car just right now it's a very very simple build open roof car it's for like that celebrity that's included in this set it's red and I could of course this looks like something out of a out of a poly bag so I believe I believe this build isn't new to anyone but definitely uh, it, it, it serves its purpose, it's nice and small, open roofed, and it's just there to act its role as just a vehicle that you can put inside the plane. Now, 
if we're thinking if we're thinking just by playing, oh yeah, just easily just let me just stuff this right in, right? I can just simply do this and then close it up. Boom, life's good. And then we lock it, the car is inside the plane, safe and sound. But let's let's talk about like realistically. It will obviously need a lift to get to the plane. Of course, this is where this cargo train comes or cargo cart comes in. This is where you'll see it the majority of the airports, I mean at all the airports, because why wouldn't you see this at the airport? Um, this, these are the cars that would carry your luggage when you check in at the airport. And they'll, be, they'll carry your luggage to the plane that you're taking, and then the people will unload it into the plane in the cargo hold. So that's what that's what this car is. And this is the box to you know store the cargo in or the luggage in. Car is very simple. It's just built very simply. Uh, that's fine. You know, just these cars aren't, they only have one job and that is to just carry stuff to the planes. So it is towed and it's towed to this thing. This is the lift for the car. Uh, but first, let me show you that you can replace this. You can pull this apart and you can also put the steps from earlier and have this towed to steps instead because obviously the steps can't be engine or I mean unless they're engined can't move themselves so this thing will also carry the steps around and then it will drop if it's like departing from the plane it will just move away like that so very nice you can change it up if you want and attach this to the cart very simply and don't pull off that because you'll need that now the default method of the set of course is to connect this back trailer where for you you can put your red car on, sit it right up there, or if you want, you can customize your own car and just have it sit on here very beautifully. Now, does this thing lift up? Well, let's put it down. I guess my hand it doesn't have the steadiest surface. Attach it like this. Do not break the steering wheel. <laughs> and let's haul it to the airplane. So we're basically recreating the realistic unloading. So. There is no ramp on this thing for the car to, you know, get off and get on, which kind of sucks. I wish there was like a, a ramp included just here so the car can actually roll up and get up here. So it makes, it realistically, it'll make more sense if it's like that, right? So that kind of sucks. You gotta have to just imagine the car just has a magical ramp right here to roll right off the, right off the transport. So to unload it into the plane, you simply lift this thing up. Very nice. And of course, make sure the car is nicely secured and doesn't fall off like what I'm doing here. And so you can lift this up. Very nice. And it actually is measured to just perfectly fit the height of this. So if we're gonna lift this up like that. Now the space for the car to go in is very limited. So you can't really imagine a parallel parking going on. You just kind of have to like push it on its side, slide it in like that, and then you just move the Move this back down, and then this thing is long gone. Now, just a close-up shot, just to see the car inside the plane. So yeah, there is barely any space. It just fits the car inside the plane just perfectly. So if you're gonna customize your own car to be stored in this plane, there you go. But if we're thinking most realistically, this will probably be impossible to put in. The, the space will have to be a lot bigger for this car to go in. So I recommend, I recommend cargo goes in here instead of an actual car just because it logically doesn't make sense but of course it, it's a toy and it's measured to just fit in it just perfectly and now you just close this up and then if you don't you don't want the car to you know be loose during the flight so of course you pull the technic pin back up and to lock this in place now the car is nice and secure inside the plane and the plane is ready for takeoff now before we take a look inside the plane there is one more thing with this plane that is mobility. Of course, easily. This thing is a little bit heavy, but you can easily pick it up, flat around, like any little kid would, easily. But if it's on the ground, of course, it has wheels. And I said the front wheels here is what steers the plane, so be really careful of what direction you're going. But yeah, look at the mobility. This thing is very smooth. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend putting this on a carpet. It's gonna have a pretty hard time rolling around. But on a, a hard, smooth surface, like a table like this, definitely look at that. You can have some great, smooth mobility going on with this plane. Reverse, forward, if you turn this thing around. 
it's perfect. And then even if you're charging, like speeding it up, about to take up, and you put it on an angle, and then, we and now the plane is taking up. Now, of course, this thing is a little bit heavy, so as a little kid, I can there could be a little bit of struggling going on trying to carry this thing, but the overall, you know, feel of carrying this isn't so bad. So. There's that. All right, we've basically, I've shown you the two exterior play features. There is stuff inside the plane that we have to show you guys. So let's go ahead and on, let's get on with it right now. Okay, first and foremost, we can take this entire nose piece off. So this, like I said, this thing is one whole mold. There's a brick right there. Here's the inside of it. All right, so that's why I'm saying I believe this piece is a brand new piece, but once you remove that, that will basically give you access to the pilot seat and the co-pilot seat. So, good. Sometimes the older planes, it was just one seat. And that doesn't make sense. A plane will have a pilot and a co-pilot. So, you can fit both in here perfectly. Both have the plane handles for some reason. That's, I think that's what's supposed to happen. And then, got the control panels here. And then in the back, you just access to the, you know, the rest of the hallway. And uh, there is also... I believe these levers are for you know for takeoff to lift the plane up and get it ready for takeoff. So that's pretty nice. And just overall, it's a little bit claustrophobic. You know, it's kind of got to stuff the co-pilot and pilot. There is no co-pilot minifigure in the set. I'll tell you right now, but definitely enough space for you to fit the pilot minifigure. And yeah, so the pilot space in here is done very well. It's done very well. It's it's executed very nicely. Now, to simply put it back on. Very easy, just snap this back, gonna make sure it's nice and tight. There you go. Now, the rest of the plane, uh, how do we remove it? I just realized, I actually gotta remove this, remove the rest, my bad. Okay, so this whole piece, this segment comes off first. Again, like I said, it's modular. Now I, now I can snap this back on. There we go, okay. So, Modular, this plane is modular, so it's perfect for you to, as a kid, you know, open up the plane and get access to it inside. Now, obviously the door is in the way, so I'm just going to remove the door for now, which will give you the full view of the inside. Now, this is where the main problem of the set is. Yikes, this is going to hurt because this is called a passenger plane, and there's only five seats in here. Five seats. So this feels more like a private plane than a passenger plane. This has the amount of seats as a car. Actually, I think a car is more. A car is, yeah, a car is, an average car is five seats. So this is seats of a car. And a lot of people ha say the same problem. I'm going to say it too. Planes have a lot of seats. You got the passenger and everything. And a passenger plane's purpose is to carry passengers. So... This passenger passenger plane can only carry five people, so that kind of sucks. And yeah, so that 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 is the main problem with the set. That is, there is not enough seats. The Lego really messed up at this part. At the front here, we got a scream with the island of Okoto. That is a Bionico reference. Yes, for those of you who didn't know, the plane's heading right for that island, and it probably has the destination or something. And I guess it's a homage to, you know, old Bionicle fans who kind of missed the retired series. So, yeah. And then, back here. Well, what do we've got back here? Well, nothing of the ordinary. We've got the bathroom right there. These are the stalls, which you can just close back up. And you know, of course, privacy. When you open it up, you can actually open up two or it's one. See, there's a toilet right there. And then there's a sink right there. So, if... <laughs> you have to lean, you have to turn around and be on the toilet to wash your hands after you do your business. So that kind, of, that is a very incom inconvenient bathroom. I wouldn't recommend. I wouldn't be in there if I were on a flight on a flight like this. There is this little gap bump. You're not quite sure what the purpose of that is. I think that's just to you know separate the plane. And then I guess here is where like I don't know. I don't know what this space is for. I think this is like store. Just to store other things and stuff. And then back here, tucked away, there is this thing. Which is, the, of course, the airplane meal cart. Where the flight attendants will 
push the cart through the stall, the, uh, the alleys of the seats, and serve the passengers food. Very, very nice build here. Um, it's just small enough, as you can see, just small enough to like fit through the gaps just like this very easily. It is attached very securely. Um, you can see. I don't know if I can get the good a good angle, and you can see there's a clip right there, and you can just snap. You can just lock the the cart back in there, and it's just it stays on very firmly. So if I'm shaking this violently and stuff. It actually stays on pretty decently, uh, no trouble at all. So that is pretty nice. So that's a good way to store the car right next to the bathroom. So I'm not quite sure of my appetite uh, about my appetite of it after seeing it, but. Yeah, not, not not a bad rendition at all, uh, but like I said, the main problem, of course, is the seats. If they just push this back a little bit, put a wall here, they could at least add a few more seats. So that is the main problem of this plane. Well, of course, you may want well, can you remove this? Well, of course not. No, you, you've got this, you got the car, the, tra the, the garage or the transport part here for the car. So this plane already opens, so of course you cannot remove the entire roof here, but if you're really not feeling it, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. It will break it. So this section, whole section comes off this entire roof just as one whole piece, as well as the nose. The nose itself is also like that. So what the heck is wrong with this door? There, I fixed it. No problem at all. Okay, let's take a look at the other thing in this set. Okay, the other thing that's included in this set is this terminal build. It's actually, it's not the biggest. It doesn't contain too much. It's obviously a actual terminal will, is a lot bigger, but this is this is probably like a $24 set if it's just this build of its own. It, it, it does its purpose, and I believe it's done pretty well. You know, you got the watchtower up here. You've got the rest of the, the airport stuff down here. It's all miniaturized, and I think that's well. That, that's all right. And of course, my favorite thing though, of this build is the roof. The use of these ramps, roller coaster ramp pieces, that is so smart and so creative. I like it. Now, the only thing I want to see is of course coverage or maybe some windows or something because this is just left exposed and there's just holes here and there's just gonna be rain droplets going right in if it's raining. So that is not, yeah, that needs to be fixed, but, if, but I, I appreciate just the idea of using these track pieces as the roof. That gives the architect, the architecture of the set a very nice finesse. I appreciate it a lot. Airport sign up here, that is a sticker. Very nice tropical sun, sunrise, sunset scenario being played here. Just got a little small tree on the side here, because why not? Nature. And then over here, what is this? Well, this is actually for uh, for that that ca uh, cargo cargo bot right here, to you know load slash unload luggage from passengers checking in. You can throw the luggage through here back here, and then the the passengers who just got off the plane can come back here and pick up the luggage, or vice versa, all way around. Passenger puts the luggage here, gets collected to the cargo train before it's moved to the the plane itself. So. That's very nice, very small miniaturized version of it. Now I'm not quite sure what this is. I believe this is a vending machine with lemonade inside. I am not quite sure, or it might be those x-ray machines, you know, to make sure you're not smuggling anything illegal in your luggage. I think it's a vending machine, but if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments, but I believe that's what it is. Yeah. And then you got the check-in desk, computer screen, not quite sure what those are. And then up here you got the, the the departure sign, what you see at airports, like the flight, the time, and then the status. I'm assuming, oh Jesus, <laughs> ST, the STM 1120 flight seems to be having a bit of a pickle there. But yeah, this whole sign is a is a sticker piece, very creative. So if you're gonna upgrade your airport, you're gonna need these signs, of course, because very important to know when your flight leaves. So. You know, you don't miss the plane, and that could be a very, very bad thing. So, last thing here on the build here is this tower, which is done very nicely. It does use this just the frames of these windows, of these doors, but which you can also open. Forgot to show you that. Trans or yeah, transparent blue doors. 
done very nicely. And then up here is of course the main watchtower. It has a rotating satellite or radio communication, you know, so the people at the watchtower can communicate with the, the, the planes that are coming, saying like, alright, it's safe to land, and the planes will come down. So, very nice, very nice build. This is really fun to rotate for some reason. And then as for the watchtower itself, very small. There's no actual ladder represented for the minifigure to climb up to get it, so this is the part where you're going to have to use your imagination. So, that's fine. Uh, not really too bothered by the loss of it, but it's fine. And then, of course, I'm going to remove this guy. You can see the main seat with just a simple control panel on the back. Of course, this whole thing is open on the back, so you can, you know, stick your fingers in and play with it. So, it's play interactive. But, overall, this whole, this whole terminal build... I said it will be pretty nice as a like a $15 set or a $25 set. It, it will work. But uh, yeah, the only thing I, I, like I said, really appreciate the roof design. Just need more windows, but not a bad build at all. Not a bad build whatsoever. Okay, we've already gone over the, the, the other side build, so if you missed it, just rewatch it. It's all fine. So the last thing we're going to go over today, of course, is the, the minifigure selection included in this set. We've actually got eight, just a reasonable amount, just like the uh, ocean exploration ship. And it very, it's very diverse, you know, the minifigures you get in the set. You get the pilots, you get the workers, you get the passengers. The range here is very nice. So starting on my left here, we just got a simple businessman who I'm going to assume is taking this flight because he's going on a business trip. Very nice beard, love the hair, the, tux the business suit, done very well. No second face. I don't even need to take off the hair piece to show you. There is no second face for this guy, but very, very, you know, very professional. Looks like a guy who's really ready for a business trip. And then we've got this guy who oh, you saw earlier. He was in the watchtower, so probably understood what he does now. He has a coffee mug, he sits in the watchtower, gives directions and orders to incoming and leaving planes. Here is the torso print. Kind of looks like a construction worker, but of course he's wearing the yellow jacket because of safety. Uh, face not new, hair is not new, we've definitely seen these prints before. And then we've got this guy. Now you may be wondering, what does he do? Well, he's one of those guys, as you can see, he's holding two, uh, um, what you call, I think they're called glow sticks or torches or something. But they're to, you know, guide planes when they take off. They're like, they're the ones that stand in front of the planes and wave at it and give the planes the directions to take off. That's why he wears the headphones, because, well, if you didn't know, the plane engines are really, really loud. No second face. And yeah, these hard hat headphone pieces, absolute favorite headpiece, does it very well. Uh, he looks like he's enjoying his job, just by the look of his face, just on there. So that's nice. And then we probably have what is the most important figure, because without this figure, that plane is going nowhere. This is the pilot, so unfortunately, there is no co-pilot in this set, it's just one simple pilot, but it's a woman, so, yeah, that's very nice, you know, it's kind of changing up a bit, usually, the older uh, airplanes, the pilots were all men, it's, it's a good thing seeing that LEGO has changed it up, make it more, you know, more fair, you know what I'm saying, not trying to, not trying to diss anyone here, so please take no offense, but, she looks pretty nice with her sunglasses, and the camera's out of focus again. Camera's out of focus again. Camera's out of focus again. Yeah, but you can see a pilot usually is dressed very nicely like that. So the prince is represented on this on this uh, torso very well. Very nice on the back. So the pilot figure, one of the most important figures in this set. And then we got passenger number one. This guy who looks like he's ready to go on a vacation in Hawaii or something. He's got a suitcase here, which is a green suitcase piece. He looks absolutely ready to go on vacation. And even in the back of his torso print, you can see the more of the Hawaiian islands or whatever tropical islands. Now this guy does have a second face. And this is the one where this is the one he gets airsick and looks like he's on the verge of throwing up. So that is a bummer. Uh, so yeah, you can actually play some scenarios in this in this. He can be that one passenger that gets airsick on the flight. Blonde hair, very nice. Now we have probably what is my favorite figure of this whole set. It's just a dad with a baby. Oh my god, the baby is so cute. What an adorable little figure. And it's so tiny too. Like, oh my goodness. 
we have gotten a baby figure before in the creator assembly square set, but mm, I can't appreciate this figure enough. He just, he's got that uh, cyan print, you can't move the arms, of course. This is a whole one piece, you can't take off his head, it's just all one piece, but... Holy cow, his smile, his innocent face, it's just so adorable. But we can't figure out the dad that holds him. So you see he has his pouch, or the thing, so he can actually hold the baby. And he's just wearing a tropical Hawaiian suit, also ready for adventure. Got the milk bottle here for the super cute baby, and here's his face. Does he have a second face? Yeah, he has. He has a more freaked out face. I think that's if the baby is like running around the plane, then he gets really, really scared face thing. But yeah, the baby just sits in here very nicely. So obviously this dad is my favorite figure of this whole set. And then we got this guy who I believe is just a rock star, a celebrity going on a trip to, you know, to play shows. Small travel case here. Very nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, he is one of the celebrities. He's got a tour tour shirt wearing on the back of all which I'm assuming which are the locations he's got like she's got like a sun a glasses face and then the no glasses face so that's that and then the final figure who is called poppy stars I believe she is also a celebrity and one of like a, the lead singer I think that one is like the you know just a member of the band this is probably like the lead singer of the band or something look at that very nice print she's got the blue hair I believe this is her him humming singing voice and just her cheeky smiley face. So there's that. So we went through all the mean figures. That took quite a while, but of course I have to say the dad figure is my favorite. So that is all the mini thing. Value, value, value. Now remember what I said, the value of this thing. Uh, I believe it is in the $120 range or actually it might be 100, 150 or something. 140. I'm pretty sure it's 140. So. This thing, like I showed you earlier, I compared it to the Ocean Exploration Ship. This thing is a lot bigger than the Ocean Exploration Ship. But, the value of this is actually cheaper than the Ocean Exploration Ship. The Ocean Exploration Ship was around 200 or 200 something. So it was quite on the expensive side, but this one was only 140 So, that or the Ocean Exploration Ship, both are really good sets, but I will have to say, for what you get out of this set, this is definitely worth more in terms of the value. You de it's, you'll definitely get a lot more out of it. And most importantly, the plain pieces are massive. They're super huge, especially the wings. Like this wing piece, like I said, it's, this is one whole piece. Nose, a giant piece. Basically, the entire bottom is a is a big piece, and a lot, a lot of big pieces within. So, with a lot of these big piece molds, obviously that will ramp up the price by a lot because, of course, they're not cheap to produce. So, in this thing, I think the hundred and forty dollars makes total perfect sense for a set like this. And uh, like like it's but it's like the Ocean Exploration ship, which has the two big molds. So, you can't look at this brick by brick you gotta look at the quality of the bricks and pieces that are this big it makes sense to have such value so yeah I'm actually okay with the price I will gladly accept this price and in the end what do I think of you know what do I think of uh, uh, this total the set as a whole excellent set I can imagine a little kid having very much fun very much fun. I don't know. I can see. Uh, I can see someone having a great time, just picking up the plane and just flying it around. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. And the fact that it's a big thing, so definitely extra fun. Has a lot of. It's gonna have a lot of play potential with it. So my final grade for this set is a nine out of ten. Um, one point off. It's just uh, the main problem is where are all the seats. It's a passenger plane, and look at how many minifigures there are. It's a problem I already addressed earlier, like, this plane, it looks awesome, but where are the seats? There's not enough actual passenger seats. There's more space to store the dang car than actual seats. So, this plane, perfect, but it needs more seats. For, because an airplane has first class, economy class, so it has a ton of seats. And this, this doesn't even make a full first class like with the seats we've got inside so yeah that's like the only problem I have with this set so apart from that that is basically it and those are all my thoughts on the passenger plane 
Uh, if you enjoyed this review, which took me two months to make, make sure to hit that like button on the video and subscribe to the channel for more. I'm sure you will love it and I'm sure this set will be loved by a lot. So, talk to you again in the next one. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.